Well, last week I wanted to do the best of 2019 video for the drone news, and then the FAA came up with this uh, gigantic monster of an NPRM. So last week you saw my information about the NPRM. Uh, kind of crazy, we got hundreds and hundreds of comments on this video, over 10,000 views at the moment. So uh, thank you for everyone that took the time to leave a comment. I'm gonna give you a quick update in a minute, but uh, so this week I wanna do the best of 2019 video. There's actually not a whole lot going on in the news because, well, this NPRM has kind of taken over. Um, so I wanna get to the top 10 of the news stories that we saw in 2019 and hopefully kind of give you a refresher and see where we came from and kind of where we're going. So let's get started. Before we get to the top 10, I wanna talk about Remote ID real quick and give you an update. The comment period is open at the moment until March 2nd. Do not rush into submitting your comment. I'm still working on digesting the whole thing and creating my own set of comments that I want to share with you guys. So there will be a video coming up. I'm thinking probably next week. This is a daunting task. It's taking hours and hours to go over and see where I disagree with the document and in providing actually some, uh, trying to provide some alternatives to uh, what should be done instead. So uh, give, give me some time, have some patience. Uh, I know some of you are really, um, adamant about this and a lot of you have either called me, emailed me or or left a message on the, on the YouTube video. So I'm kind of excited to see all of you guys uh, kind of reacting to this because I think there needs to be a major reaction so the FA realizes what's going on. So uh, again, I'll have talking points. I'll have a page where I'm gonna share all my information but give me some time to, uh, to get this going and then uh, I'm gonna tell you how you can submit the comments and everything. So, all right, let's stop talking about this damn NPRM and uh, let's go into the top 10. And I'm gonna start from number 10 and then go to number one which I think is the biggest news of the, of the year. So. Top 10, starting with 10, we have this uh, guy that got fined $20,000 for flying his drone over Las Vegas, if you remember, and then it ended up landing at the airport in Las Vegas. So not really a good piece. I wanted to kind of get out of the way all the, the bad news. With number nine, what we have is the, the tort law. We talked a lot about the tort law on this channel. And what we had, for those of you that are not familiar, we had the ULC, the Uniform Law Commission, that was trying to get some regulation out there uh, to restrict the first 200 feet of airspace for privacy reasons. And what happened is that people get involved from the industry and uh, convinced the ULC to not do this. The ULC was gonna vote on it at, uh, in the summer, in July, I think it was. And at the very last minute, a new group kind of came in and said, uh-uh, we don't like this. This is not gonna work for us. And so the ULC decided to kind of table the issue for the next couple months until the NPRM information came out. Well, you know what came out in the NPRM <laughs> uh, for remote ID. Uh, so we'll see what happens with the ULC. I don't think this is a story that's ending right here. We'll see more of that in 2020. In uh, number eight, what we have is a lot of anti-drone technology. We talked about this. I talked about this very recently, but uh, going back as far as episode number two, I think we talked about uh, the anti-drone technology. We saw lasers that could shoot drones in the sky. We saw uh, drone interceptors that was kind of like a, a kamikaze that was hitting the drones that uh, were not working correctly. We saw a drone, uh, we saw a, a company in, I think it was Miami, uh, down, down south, that uh, was using illegal technology to uh, jam a signal at a concert and they got in trouble for this. So we see the proliferation of anti-drone technology out there and it's not gonna stop anytime soon, especially with what was in the NPRM for remote ID. In number seven, we have um, a lot of talk, I spent a lot of time talking about flying over people. A lot of waivers were approved, something that we had really never seen before 2019, uh, kind of became more common. Uh, there's over 40 waivers out there that have been approved. As a matter of fact, my friend Mark in, uh, at Aerial, Extreme Aerial, sent me a message a couple days ago, said that he was approved, first one in Arizona to get the flyover people waiver. So Mark, if you're watching, congrats. And. Uh, uh, the company, uh, Pair Zero, has been instrumental in getting all these waivers approved. They have the parachute technology uh, that they created, and along with uh, meeting a, a standard, an ASTM standard, companies are getting approved to fly over people with the parachute. 
In number six, we have DJI because, well, we talk a lot about DJI. They're one of the biggest, the biggest uh, drone manufacturer out there. They were in the news for a lot of things, good ones, bad ones. Uh, the Mavic Mini was a, a big piece of news, the sub 250 gram drone. We made a video talking about just that. Do you need to get approval to fly the Mavic Mini? What does the two sub 250 brings you? The bottom line is it only brings you the, the saving of $5 on your registration. You still have to follow all the other regulation. Um, there was also a lot of issues with uh, DJI with uh, data collection. There were rumors that they were sending data to China. Um, as a result, the government said we're not going to be using DJI or, or I should say uh, foreign made drones for their operation. And uh, DJI kind of counterattacked and basically said we have a government edition now that doesn't connect to the internet. So uh, this has been kind of an interesting thing. The latest that I've seen is that the, the government is still not using these drones for a critical operation. And then in number five, we had a bunch of other drones. Uh, DJI was not the only one that came up with new drones out there. We had Hotel. Hotel came up with a, an FPV package for their Evo. We had uh, Hotel as well that rumored to be coming up with an Evo 2 that has an 8K resolution camera on it, which would be uh, kind of amazing. We had Skydio, a uh, lot of talk about Skydio, lots of reviews online about Skydio. This drone that kind of had this uh, obstacle clearance and, and a lot of chatter about this because this thing kind of uh, avoided a lot of uh, different obstacles flying around and kind of flying by itself, being used as a... Uh, as kind of a selfie camera, uh, action camera. So there was a lot of talk about this. Parrot was in the news as well. They, they had the uh, Anafi, they added a thermal capability to the Anafi platform that they have. They also came up with the Bluegrass uh, drone that uh, is designed for agricultural purposes. It has a multi-spectrum camera on it. And then we had Velopter that came out with their Velodrone, which was this massive, massive drone that could lift 440 pounds. So a lot of new drones out there. Uh, I do talk about DJI a lot because unfortunately they're in the news a lot, but I also like to pinpoint all the other uh, manufacturers out there that are uh, competing and uh, coming up with cool drones, cool technology. In number four, what we had was drone deliveries. This was something that I talked about week after week, where we had more and more companies adding drone delivery. Um, FedEx, UPS, you have Amazon, you have Alphabet, uh, Google. And um, unfortunately, this led to, I think, a lot of the language in the NPRM for remote ID. So it will be interesting to see where this goes. Um, lots of people wanting to deliver stuff by drone, which quite frankly, don't think is the greatest of ideas, but that's just my point. Number three, uh, number three was a major change by the FAA to the hobbyist regulation. And uh, this came with section 349. And if you followed me for a while, you know that I talked about this. Uh, we have a course that mentions this in our Drone Flying 101, where we talk about all the regulation you have to follow as a hobbyist. The two major changes that came from section 349 was the fact that hobbyists have to get approval to fly in controlled airspace. And they can do this via a lens provider on their phone, like Kitty Hawk, for example, or they can do it from the FAA drone zone if an airport is not part of the, uh, the lens technology. So the other thing too was an added limitation to 400 feet before section 349, which was uh, section 333, then you needed to, you, you weren't really limited to 400 feet. Now, uh, hobbyists are limited to 400 feet, just like the, uh, the remote pilots are under part 107. So that was a big change. Uh, another thing that the FAA came up with with section 349, or was mandated by Congress, I should say, with the, uh, the Reauthorization Act of 2018, um, was the fact that um, there is a, a test. There's going to be a, an aeronautical test. It's not in place just yet. Uh, a lot of you have made comments about this. Uh, we don't have the requirements yet. We don't know what's going to be in the test. My assumption is that in 2020, we will hear more about this. Once people kind of uh, calm down from the uh, NPRM, I think the FAA is probably waiting now uh, because there was a lot of chatter about this. So uh, I made a full explanation again on section 349. I'll put a link right here so you can see the video and, and what I talked about. In number two, getting close to number one now, was a lot of drones for good moments. And I wanted to keep that at the top right here because I think it's important. 
Um, it's important that news that the drones are in the news for good things. We had drones uh, finding 450 deers, baby deer, in uh, Switzerland and saving them from being mowed down by uh, agricultural efforts. We had a drone finding a six-year-old kid that got lost with his dog in Minnesota, and they found him with a thermal camera at night before he froze. And uh, that was just an amazing story. We had uh, a guy finding a, a shark on the beach and uh, warning a surfer with the microphone on his, the, the speakerphone on his drone, uh, telling him there was a shark in the area. And then we had drones finding fugitives in the, uh, the China mountains and uh, that had been hiding in there for 17 years. So lots of drones for good out there. And again, I want to really emphasize on this. Drones can do good things. A lot of, most of the time, drones do good things. And I think that needs to be in the news a lot more. And of course, for number one, I kept the biggest one, which happened at the very end of the year, which is our NPR Info Remote ID. Uh, you've heard me, there's a 45 minute video you can watch to get the detail when I went over the 319 page document. And, uh, and there's gonna be more coming out for this, obviously, because that's, uh, that's a hot topic. It's got everybody talking. Um, I do wanna clarify a point in there because um, either I didn't make it clear enough or it's early in the video and, and people don't really watch till the end of the video, but um, the internet requirement is, I think, one of the, the, the little mistaken area uh, in the NPRM. The FAA is not requiring internet connection for the entirety of the flight for the standard remote ID. If you're gonna buy a drone equipped with the proposed standard remote ID, as long as there is no internet connection available at all near you, you will be able to take off and fly as long as the broadcast capability is available on the drone. So I wanted to make that clear because I think it's kind of a point of confusion. Um, if you have a limited uh, remote ID drone, which I'm gonna expect is gonna be just the smaller drones will be equipped with that, if you have a limited remote ID drone, then you will only be able to fly within a 400 foot radius around you. So that's kind of the difference between the two. Now, the, the big point of contention is the fact that uh, the FAA said if the internet is available for the standard remote ID, if the internet is available on takeoff, but you can connect to a USS, a service provider, then you can't fly. And that's, I think, what a lot of people are talking about with the fact that if you don't, if you have the internet available, but you can't get a connection, you're grounded. And that's, that should not be the case. So again, I'll, I'll make that point in my, in my video in the future. But uh, this is number one and uh, not the best number one, unfortunately. I do want to end on a positive note because we have done a lot of good things. And, and at Pirate Institute, there's been uh, just so many changes this year and so much growth. So I wanted to thank you for watching the channel this year. We're adding customer, we're adding more and more subscribers every day. And, and we're having not only subscribers, but people that actually interact with the videos. And I, and I just love this. I love the comments, uh, not all of them, but I do love, I would say 99% of the comments because uh, because they're, they're great comments. They're, you guys are involved. You guys understand what is going on. And I, and I really appreciate that. So if I interact with you on the comment section, it means that I appreciate your comment and I hope you come back and watch some more. Uh, we've, we've, we've reached the point where we have over 7,000 students now in Pilot Institute and uh, over 10,000 enrollments in our courses. Uh, this is, I'm not gonna lie, not something that I had ever dreamt of getting to that point. It's, uh, it's just been amazing. The, the feedback has been amazing from our students in the courses. So I'm really grateful for this. Um, we've added a lot of cool stuff to our offerings. We have um, a new app on our part 107 test prep. This is something we added this year. It's a flashcard app. It's got 120 flashcards in there. And if you're a course subscriber, you can have access to it and get better with your knowledge. We've also added a cheat sheet, an 11 page cheat sheet. It's a beautiful document. We have explanations to all the 250 figures, uh, questions in the, uh, in the exam. So this course is really solid. Uh, I think personally, not unbiased, but the most um, comprehensive course on the internet at the moment for part 107. We've also added three courses. We have a drone maneuvers mastery class where you have 50 uh, maneuvers that you can perform and get better at flying and spend a lot of hours uh, designing this course and recording it on the field, which was a ton of fun. Uh, we build a cinematic FPV drone course with Don, uh, amazing 
um, a step by step of building a drone from scratch, an FPV drone. So if you're interested in doing this, uh, Don is the expert. He's been doing this for years and years, built over a hundred different models. So uh, if you're interested in doing that, the course is awesome. And then just recently, the drone business made easy. Spent a lot of hours also creating this course and trying to give you a good basis. And uh, not only that, but I'm trying to be very realistic about your expectations because I think a lot of people don't realize that, well, getting a drone business is not an easy thing. And I want you to get started on the right foot. So uh, I put seven hours of content together to help you start a business. So there's a lot more surprises coming up in 2020, a lot more videos about a lot of different things. I've got a full list of courses that I'm working on. So uh, you'll hear more and you'll see more new courses and, and more content and more news update as well. So. Again, thank you for watching this year and a happy new year to you, 2020. I hope you get a lot of good flying, cool new drones, and I hope we can get this uh, remote ID thing sorted out and then uh, move on and keep doing cool stuff with drones. And that's it, that's all I have. See you guys, have a great weekend and I'll see you next week.